Alright, hello everyone, and welcome back to Death Stranding. This is episode 3, where last time we did some stuff and some things in relation to connecting networks with our fancy levitating necklace. There's, there's so much going on in this game. We've got a dream catcher, we've got energy drinks, we've got a floating baby in a tank, we've got fancy showers, we've got uh, weird ghosts that are trying to take us into the afterlife, but we have the ability to come back to life. Norman Reedus is here, and we're going to continue playing Death Stranding just to figure out what the hell uh, is going on in this game. Uh, so we're going to essentially, like, we're, you know, we're, we're doing stuff on this map, as you can see. There's a region here. Uh, our current orders, we don't have any yet because we need to go and pick some up. Uh, we've got some mail, apparently, from George uh, Baton and Benjamin Hancock. Um, interestingly enough, it's like actually a proper uh, email, like actual communication, which I'm assuming this is in regards to like the work that we're doing in regards to deliveries. Loving the Death Stranding e uh, emojis. <laughs> Sam the man, our savior. Things are looking up here at the way station. Everything feels better somehow. We were all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed when we set ourselves up, but three years of isolation and loneliness will change anyone's tune. Hell, when we first got here, we were putting up signs for porters and whatnot, but after a while, some guys got too scared to even set foot outside. When Central went up, I told myself this was it. America's done. Everyone was feeling it too, and the mood was just bleak. And then you waltzed on in. I know what you're thinking. At first, I thought it was just the oxytoxin too, but that's not, that's not it. Not all of it, anyhow. You gave us a glimmer of hope we needed by bringing us into the chiral network. We're back in the game now, been thinking of putting up signs again even, watchtowers too. Before long we'll be opening up new delivery routes, mark my words. It's still scary out there though, all the oxy in the world won't help us deal with mules, let alone BTs. We shit ourselves every time we catch sight of one and end up dropping half our equipment. Honestly, a part of me is still a little worried that we won't be able to keep it up. And that's why we need you, Sam. You're not scared of anything, right? So go show us how it's done. <laughs> Benjamin Hancock. Sorry, Sam. Bad news. Thanks for delivering those rare medals, Sam. Everyone at the Distro Center really appreciates you coming through for us. I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you, though. That bike you saw outside, its battery's dead. You'll have to give it some juice if you want to use it. Only need to do it once, though. Auto charger should kick in after. Sorry if we got your hopes up, and uh, I've got some more bad news for you, too. Yeah, goddamn, as soon as I saw that bike, I was like, we've got a bike! We can go! We can, like, fly! <laughs> we can fly! <laughs> you see, different facilities have to work together, sharing materials so everyone gets what they need, and to make sure that everything that's produced gets put to proper use. And that's why guys like you are so important. Without porters, the whole system falls apart. Whole world, even. Anyway, there's this guy, George Baton, uh, over at the way station. He used to be a reliable porter, but lately it's like pulling teeth getting him to make even the simplest delivery. He keeps bitching about being scared or not having enough oxy or whatever. Always some excuse. Even when he does agree to make a run, he's liable to lose half of his load en route. <laughs> half his load. Water emoji. <laughs> so yeah, that's why we're a bit short on materials at the moment. I'm sure you'll soon help us put that to rights. We're counting on you, Sam. He keeps losing his load. <laughs> Interesting. There you go. Okay. So they both talk. He's talking shit about George. Um, we got some interviews. So we actually do have uh, more interviews that have popped up. Uh, so we'll take a read of these now as well. We'll get all the reading out of the way at the beginning and then we'll get into the gameplay. Otherwise, I will forget about it. So we obviously picked these up at the end of, uh, towards the end of last episode, some more interviews, which are so interesting. Like, I know that some of you might not want to listen to this and you'll go, ah, this word's boring. Where's the, where's the gameplay? Um, but I really want to learn the story in this world and I do like to take everything in. Like, if you watched me through the Metal Gear Solid playthroughs, we listen to like all the briefing files in Peace Walker, all the cassette tapes in Metal Gear Solid 5. You know, we want to get as much information as possible uh, to really be a part of this story and this world. So this is Mules and Drone Syndrome from Die Hard Man. Bridges' primary objective is to rebuild America, and in order to rebuild, one of our main tasks is to reconnect cities and other settlements by re-establishing a delivery network. 
Back before the Death Stranding, the comms and delivery networks were what held society together. The whole thing was automated, AI managed, deliveries carried out by drone. The belief was that uh, taking people out of the equation would revolutionize the entire system, but things didn't quite pan out that way. Instead, we started seeing cases of what would eventually be dubbed drone syndrome. It was too much for some folks to accept, leaving everything to machines and nothing for the common man. And indeed, the oxytoxin deficiency and hormonal imbalances we confirmed seemed to back up that assessment. Humanity needed to be a part of the process, so laws were put in place and we stepped back into the picture again. And then what happened? All the people put out of work by machines who got cold up again convinced themselves society couldn't survive without them, and that brought on a whole new disorder, Delivery Dependence Syndrome, they called it. When the Death Stranding tore us apart, the delivery problem spiralled even further. It wasn't helped any by the fact that chiral clouds prevented planes and drones from flying, which meant we had to go back uh, to relying completely on human couriers whether we liked it or not. Eventually, delivering goods became all some lived for. They were obsessed, addicted, consumed by the desire to deliver. Over time, they turned into the mules we know and love today. So that's what, that's what the mules are. So mules are these couriers that got consumed by their desire to deliver. That's so bizarre. Bridge babies from Dead Man. Look, I'm kind of new here at Bridges, so I don't know if any of this will be useful to you. Still, I'm happy to talk about BBs if that's what you want. They call me Dead Man, on account of my familiarity with the dead, get it? <laughs> We've always been on good terms, you see. Used to have regular little chats back when I worked in the morgue. Anyway, that's also the reason I work on BB maintenance and research, to learn more about those who are no longer with us. But I digress. Fact is, BBs were already being issued to our forces in the field before I joined Bridges. What's more, research into the little guys had already been conducted long, long ago, but no one took the plunge and put what they discovered to practical use. Still, what that did mean is that when Bridges wanted to build our own BBs, most of the work had already been done for us. We just needed to follow the instruction manual, so to speak. Which isn't to say we have, uh, which isn't to say we have any idea how they work. Not how they can detect BTs or how they can connect this world to the other side. We still have much to learn about our little friends, but one thing is certain. Their continued study will lead us to a greater understanding of the stranding and of life and death itself. That much, I can assure you. Well, I think that's about all I have time to tell you today. Hopefully I'll have something new to share next time we chew the fat. See you around, I guess. And then we've got Timefall from Heartman. Timefall was first recorded when the Death Stranding occurred, and despite all the years that have passed since then, we are no closer to understanding how or why it accelerates the passage of time for the objects and organisms it touches, or why it immediately turns to ordinary water having done so. Some researchers have gone as far as to posit the process as stealing time. As for why Timefall is observed only in certain places, all that we know for certain is that it's somehow affected by local chiral concentrations. This is merely a hunch, but something in me suspects that the Death Stranding may have warped our perception of the passage of time. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing, you understand. We humans can conceive our own deaths, and even the possibility of a place beyond death, yes? We have the, cons the capacity con to conceptualize out the future, an evolutionary advantage which aided our development as a species. Well, what if Timefall has given us a new, supercharged version of this essential ability, one that will take us to the next stage of our evolution? Perhaps we wouldn't need to hole ourselves up in the Not Cities. Perhaps, in time, the Death Stranding will come to be seen as the phenomenon that saved our species. Exciting thoughts, I'm sure you'll agree. I, for one, can't wait to set on our journey. Who knows what awaits us? I don't know if I agree with that, bud. Don't know if I agree with that. Uh, but now that I've got some reading out of the way, uh, checking out the terminal, getting some likes from my delivery boys. Uh, I think we can. I think we can head out, receive new orders, and uh, see how we're going to go. Maybe I'll. Uh, maybe I'll drink an energy drink before we head out. You know. Maybe I'll get one of those. You know. That's actually. That's actually a good idea. I'll be right back. Here's to you, Norman Reedus. Alright, let's get started. Oh, we, we drink together. 
the other that you can put on your headwear and your glasses while you're in here. Got to check on our BB. It's been some time since I've uh, since I've chilled out with BB. Um, I want to soothe him. Give him a little. Give him a little blink. You okay? <laughs> BB looks happy. Do it again. You okay? I'm so sad that I don't have the collector's edition of this game because I'm pretty sure the collector's edition uh, came with a BB, right? Did it come with a BB? I'm pretty sure it came with a BB. And the uh, collector's edition PS4, uh, like the PS4 bundle, looked really cool. Um, it looked really cool. Like, um, the handprints and stuff on it was a really neat touch. Let's take a shower while we're at it as well. And then we'll head on out. Gotta get our, gotta get our samples looked over by, uh, by Heartman. Study other people with dooms? Everyone in Bridges, myself and Mama. Results thus far are inconclusive. But you possess other singular qualities, being a repatriate as well. I must confess to a measure of optimism. Processing fluids, waste products, dry relic, dispensing. <laughs> There. Take the sample with you. Should the opportunity arise, try using it on a BT. I'm curious to see how they react. Who knows? It may even prove beneficial to you. There was an old research paper detailing the effects of bodily fluids from individuals like us on BTs. It is only by recovering these materials that we can unearth the knowledge of the past. Not just the death stranding but also the mystery of your body's unique properties and even our doom's affliction. There may well be hope for humanity. Sam, I have no interest in rebuilding America. I want to recover the past. Five, oh, four, it's almost three, time. Two, After you make your connections and nothing happens, then what? I said, then what? Interesting. So, use use the bodily fluid. Sorry to bother you while you're taking a break, but I figured you'd want to hear this. Hell, maybe it'll help you rest easier. We received a number of messages addressed to you. I've not taken a look myself, but I gather they're mostly from your clients. You should see if they contain any useful information. Mail can be accessed via your cufflinks, as well as the terminal in your private room. There's something else I'd like to share with you. With the Cairo network, we now have the power to reclaim our past. Data once thought lost forever from every corner of America can be pieced back together from fragmented records. Our archives are still a work in progress, of course. But as we expand the network and integrate more way stations and cities, we'll be able to recover more and more information, such as the previous expeditions, logs, and reports. Everything they sent back was lost when Central Knot City was destroyed. Now we've managed to restore some already, in fact. You can access them from a private room terminal or your cufflinks by selecting archives. Might make for interesting reading. It makes for really interesting reading. That is an understatement. Also, I love that I accidentally already, like, we read the messages. Because it was like, oh, we should cut the terminal. Ooh, we have mail. <laughs> and then... They were like, oh, it popped up with the notifications on the side after the, uh, after the cutscene being like, you want to go read that mail again? <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, because now it's no longer here. It wants us to check it out again, but we already just read the mail, so that's fine. As well as the interviews. But um, it's really interesting. So it popped up with like an EX grenade or something like that. So that's our... I'm wondering if that's X for like our excrement. <laughs> Um, so he wanted us to use it on a BT next time we get the chance, which I think is 
Very interesting. Uh, that's very interesting. Let's leave. Let's go get our orders. It's time to go. Get our shower. We've got an EX grenade. It's a super interesting dynamic to uh, to me as well. Oh, we still have so much stuff. <laughs> Sam, out of curiosity, how's it doing at the moment? Uh, before I answer that, something wrong? When I hook up my BB, I see things. What kind of things? Like a face, someone I don't know, calling to me. There's this room, too. With other people talking, but I can't make out the words. Mm, bleed through effect. Didn't I warn you about this? You're mistaking the BB's memories for your own. They're false flashbacks, nothing more. Let me explain. A BB is harvested from its steel mother at around 28 weeks and placed in a pod. To be clear, this is before it's even born. The procedure halts its development. But even at 28 weeks, its sensory systems have matured enough to process external stimuli. It is more than capable of encoding this information into memories, which can bleed into yours via your connection. So who's the man I saw? Someone from the medical team, maybe? Or a BB technician? Does it matter? The BB has been in circulation for a while now. It's been handled by a lot of people. How should I know which one made an impression? Because you're the expert. No one's an expert, Sam. BBs were developed decades ago in secret. They're your quintessential black boxes. We may use them, but we don't truly understand them. Believe me, I've been trying to learn more, but almost all of the old records are gone. If I find anything out, I'll tell you, all right? Dead man's honor. Sam. All Check clear. the delivery terminal and review the list of orders. Well, paths I laid down were used by other people. That's cool. I got likes for that. Love that. That's so cool. I need to offload all of this delivery from last episode as well. Um, why do I get the feeling? we Last episode, we were told that BBs uh, don't last very long. Uh, they're not in service for very long. Why do I get the feeling that this BB, though, is older than... That, that is older than at the standard BB because like we're flashing back to it's what's really interesting is I like, I'm I thought that um, all that I've seen of Mads Mikkelsen's character was from a uh, one of the first trailers that came out where he's like got some army dudes and he looks fucking menacing as hell um, so to see Mads Mikkelsen as like S some scientist guy that's like BB I am your father and I'm like a nice looking dude it's that's like really unexpected for me um so I'm really curious to see like this BB is Mads Mikkelsen's son um I can't wait to find out w more about that character and what the hell is going on there that's really fascinating to me but it like could that have been like th those memories don't seem like they would have been like within a year because we already had like the BB being used by corpse disposal. Like maybe this is like past hands a few times or something like that. This BB is a very special one. Who knows? I'm really, really interested to, to learn more about it. But let's pop open this terminal so I can see if I can make these deliveries. While you're arresting, I ran some network diagnostics. Pirelium monitoring and holographic systems are nominal. Unfortunately, our printer is offline. I know, I know, after all the trouble you went through to bring us those materials. This one's on us. We ordered a part a while back, but it never arrived. The printer needs it to communicate with the chiral network. Mules must have snatched it, caught that porter en route or something. If I'm right, they'll have taken it to their drop site, which is smack dab in the middle of their territory. 
Don't suppose you'd be up for stealing us our property back? Can't think of anyone more qualified than you. I'll take it. Okay, let's make some deliveries. Deliver lost cargo. We've got a bunch. Uh, this is interesting because I need to take it back to... I need to take it back to some other places. Hmm. Hmm. Do I want to take this to their original spots? I have a bunch of stuff, though. Taking on new orders at this time is probably a bad idea, and they don't have a printer, so I can't make stuff. Hmm. What I might do is, you know, end of last episode, I'm obviously carrying a bunch of stuff on me. Because there's so much lost cargo, and at this point, judging by that interview I read, I'm going to become a mule. I'm already obsessed with deliveries and picking up everything and wanting to, like, take it to the right place and do my job properly. Um, and it's and it's so much fun to do so. Uh, so I, I think I'm going to I'm gonna do that. Name's Sam. Don't mind me. Baby's crying. I'm just trying to like a thing. How do I soothe my BB again? How do we do that? I need to remember how to do the BB. That's photo mode. Hello. Hello. I forgot how to get my BB out. Beginning scan. Have a pleasant journey. I'm just gonna like everything. Free likes for everybody. This is the world we live in. We connect with people, guys. The theme of this game is connection. We connect with people through social media likes. <laughs> and trying not to fall over with our goddamn deliveries. Um, God, this is fascinating. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be a cool delivery man. I'm gonna deliver these properly to their intended destination. So, I need to... Uh, when box is displayed at delivery terminals, the box icon at the bottom right of the delivery terminal means there's cargo in that facility's share locker. Cool. Uh, I need to make some deliveries uh, for a bunch of stuff to return the old media, and I need to do this as well. I'm feeling like I'm feeling like I'm in a mood for some walking to do some deliveries, so I'm going to make some journeys over here, uh, and then I will I will pick up new orders which I assume, because this is the mule area, we'll need to go here and steal some stuff. So I'm just going to run on through, do some deliveries, and then we'll be back to doing our main orders. So I've got I to gotta finish my job, you know. I'm a delivery man. i got to do it right. Let's deliver some lost cargo. The old media. Um, only one thing to return here. <laughs> Only one thing to return. Um, dude, the, I forgot how piercing the rain is and weathering down my gear. Also, the fact that uh, my my boots... Thank you, Sam. My boots, I almost have none left. I'm going to run out of boots. I need to make more boots. Uh, because we're in trouble. Expert handler. See? I'm an expert. Not really. Um, it took me a lot of time. <laughs> All right, then. Thanks for everything. So I've still I've still got more to deliver back at the old home base. Um, and it's not it's not looking good. It's not it's not looking good. I can claim some cargo. There's a whole bunch in here if I want it. But I'm not gonna do that yet. Oh, actually, are there some boots in here? Because there's ladders and climbing anchors. Cargo for Sam. Ooh. I lost some cargo. Backup fuel. Oh, this is my own stuff. I need boots, dude, because I'm gonna I'm gonna run out. Okay. Cargo for Sam. I got some cargo. Oh, I think I just cancelled it. Hold on. Give me that. And then I confirm by holding down X. Right. Wonderful. Why do I have to return that? I can just deliver it here? Okay. I, 
just got some lost cargo and I could deliver it in the same spot. That's really nice. Wonderful. I think I must be able to like print the new boots like you can print stuff but the printer at that place is broken and I don't think I can print it here either. All right then. Thanks for everything. You're welcome. I just picked up the cargo here and then I could deliver it here. That's all that's all I had to do. Now fabricate equipment. I can't fabricate boots. So am I gonna be barefoot? When I when my boots break? Because that's that's what's happening right now. My boots are almost gone. Alright, so I've got stuff. Now I need to go. I can climb back this way. We'll see if I even make it. I don't think my boots are gonna make it. So it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting thing to find out what happens when I run out of boots. Because I probably have to get this printer online, steal something from here, get the printer online. Maybe I can make boots here. We'll see how we go. But regardless, if I don't make it, I'm probably just gonna have to end up dropping stuff in a post box and and not being able to deliver it myself. But we'll see how we go. Thanks for the delivery. Gotta say, I really appreciate you going the extra mile. See you soon, brother. Good work. I have all this cargo. You can recycle stuff? What do, I, what do I get from recycling, though? Just materials, okay. So that's what happens when we donate. Okay. That makes sense. So... Oh. That makes much more sense. So this kind of stuff is not cargo to deliver. It's just stuff that you can recycle. And then you get more materials. Oh, okay. Well, I just made my life incredibly difficult by carrying this all the way back home because I was like, oh, well, I can't deliver this at these two places, so it must be back at Capital Nut City. Thank you. No. I could donate it anywhere and took a big weight off my shoulders, but there you go. Um, but I can't fabricate boots yet, so... Done. Thank you well, for your contribution. Wonderful. Now all I've got on me are ladders that I have deteriorated like crazy. Your private locker can be used to store cargo and the like. Alright. Well, I'm going to store some ladders. Because I've got a bunch of them. So... My boots? My boots are also completely gone. This has stayed at 99% damage for my whole walk back, by the way. So I'm wondering if because I'm at the beginning of the game and I'm just running around like an absolute chicken with no head, um, that it's not uh, destroying the boots for me. It's giving me a mercy that it's like, hey, you're at the beginning of the game. You suck at this game right now. So what we're going to do <laughs> is allow your boots to remain... <laughs> will allow your boots to remain um, while I run around and figure this game out. But there you go. I took took some weight off, so now I can I can go and run back um, and make my long journey back here. I'm just making it harder for myself right now, I'm realizing. And this is like learning about the game and how deliveries work and also materials. So that is a tough lesson that I will not... I will not make that mistake again. So when I pick up materials, I can actually just deliver them at 
the main any of the main places, break them down into more materials. I don't have to actually deliver them to a specific location. So that's good to know. Uh, I just have to figure that out myself. Um, but I'm now going to head back to the distribution center so I can pick up my orders. I'm assuming we've got to get something from here and then hopefully I'll be able to make some boots or something. So that'll be exciting. Can you see that uh, BB's makes bubbles? And they're in the shape of love hearts when uh, you make him happy. How cool is that? He makes little love heart bubbles. We're on a little journey together and I keep accidentally stressing him out because I'm trying to climb a goddamn mountain. But you can make him give you love heart bubbles and I think that uh, that makes it all worth it, you know? Here I am on my long journey back as walking in this game is a hell of a journey, but it's beautiful. It is gorgeous. I can chuck on my my own music, my own playlist in the in the silence, you know. It's the music that fits the themes uh, and soundtrack of uh, what I've come to experience from Death Stranding so far, and I just think it's I just think it's very beautiful. Um, and uh, like I've said, and like you've like you've already seen, like I will be, you know, cutting cutting out pieces um, and the downtime of uh, the Death Stranding playthrough. You know, as we as we go along, because obviously there are going to be moments where there's you know a lot of downtime and a lot of just walking around and you know finding my finding the appropriate pathway to take. You know, and obviously I don't think you're gonna want to sit with me through. All of the all of the walking, at least some of it, for sure, um, and anything that's that's relevant. But I do just want to say, like, I do hope that cutting around and and trimming trimming the fat from my journeys, you know, is uh, is okay because I feel like this game is quite long. Um, it is quite long, and it does have does have a lot of a lot of downtime, you know. The way station. I'm actually headed there, so I actually might take this cargo with me. There we go. That is uh, that is George's lost cargo, so I'll take that. Um, but like this game is this game is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, like go for a walk, get some cargo, put on put on a nice calm playlist of music that you really like. That you know, and, and just and just enjoy it. Even like you could put on you could put on a podcast. You know, listen to an audio book. Like I really like how uh, this game can handle. Uh, downtime, while it also does have like engaging, engaging gameplay, you know. Um, I think it's, I think it's quite a beautiful, quite a beautiful thing. Picking up some cargo, being a delivery man, you know. George, dropping all this cargo because, like he said, you know, when we spoke to him, uh, he's like, you know, he gets spooked. He gets spooked and he ends up uh, dropping all of his cargo. So we're just picking up his, uh, picking up his slack. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to take a brief moment just to talk about like, you know, I'm obviously going to show you everything that's, uh, that's important and uh, that, you know, goes down in this game. But I feel like there'll be, there'll be a lot of downtime and I get to enjoy some peaceful moments to myself and then uh, we get to engage in the fun story stuff together. Um, so just know that I am trying to make sure that this is a, um, a complete let's play experience um, but I think there is a point where we can all agree that there is some necessary fat trimming uh, when there's a game with a lot of a lot of downtime that I don't particularly feel like I can provide constant commentary throughout you know there are just moments like this where I'm like you know what this game's really beautiful guys and uh, we're just we're just walking onto the way station so we can deliver this cargo and I, I love that sometimes <laughs> Sam just talks to himself and says random stuff and if you idle Sam for a particular amount of time he'll end he'll end up just um he'll end up just having like a rest and he'll sleep and he'll say stuff in his sleep which is very interesting as well and there's just there's just a, a lot going on in this game a lot of a lot of small details too I'm trying to look for a ladder here but we might just find a smaller opening and we'll get up to that way station. Oh, hang on. 
Got some more old media here. Georgie boy dropping everything once again. At least all of this stuff can get uh, delivered to the way station, so that's very good. This is all of the stuff that I probably wish that I could have carried in the last episode. Ooh, those mule boots. If we if we're going into mule uh, territory, uh, when I next pick up that order, I think we're gonna be I think we're gonna be pretty good at getting some new boots finally. Um, but yeah, it definitely has confirmed what I thought is my boots have been at 99% damage for this whole time. So the game's actually being very kind. So before you're allowed to make boots, your boots are actually infinite. It uh, gives you the illusion that they're going to run out at this point, because obviously they get damaged and stuff, like normal, just until they get to the, the, the last point. I'm glad that I picked up enough cargo in a seemingly natural way. So I wasn't carrying this whole thing the whole time, but I'm going to try and get into the I'm going to try and get into the habit of not um, overloading myself with cargo on my journeys because it's it's very it's it is very slow, and I feel like I'd be more efficient if I maybe just like focused on doing lighter loads of cargo instead. That would work out very well. This this is a examples like this when I'm on my way to a destination and I find the cargo is going to be different, but. When I'm taking on main orders, I might try and split up my time between making like side deliveries in my own time and then doing main deliveries and focusing on on just that, at least as much as possible. We'll see how see how much I can resist the urge, the temptation to pick up a whole bunch of other cargo. But right, let's deliver the lost cargo for George. Um, got a whole bunch. Make that delivery. Delivering cargo. Thank you, Sam. Gotta say, you truly are incredible. Thanks, bud. Just trying to get as much likes as I can. New interview data required. Likes secrete oxytoxin. Some of this facility's bandwidth has been shared with Sam, so more structures can now be built. Uh, the following... Uh, George Baton has provided data for the following Ludens mask frame color, rose pink. Because my connection level has increased. This is why I deliver miscellaneous cargo. Alright then. Thanks for everything. So I assume that the rewards that you would get would be much slower if you entrust the cargo instead of uh, delivering it yourself, you know? There we go. Alright, I'm gonna head on my way back down to the distribution center west of Capital Not City, which is where we started! Because <laughs> maybe I should have picked up those orders in the beginning, and then we'll probably end up back here in the mule area to uh, steal ourselves that part uh, for, the, for the printer. Trying to run away from this dude, but I don't think it's going to go very well. So maybe, maybe we should try and fight. There is combat. I do have the ability to combat people. Body slam. Knee strike. Dude, I just got my first kill. I killed it. Oh no, he's knocked out because he's got the thing. He's got the stars above his head. Okay. Check this combat out, dude. There's another two people coming for me there. Oh, I don't need a ladder. I can't eat Cryptobio right now because I already ate one. But I accidentally just set up my ladder. <laughs> so I guess my pulse can potentially set them off as well. Alright, 
I'm gonna try and do a thing with this ladder. Because there isn't one here. We do it ourselves. So... I don't know if that's gonna be wide enough. Maybe I should set the ladder down over here. Is that a very good ladder? No, it was a terrible ladder. It was awful. Ah, oh, the boots are on this dude. Okay, he's got the boots. Alright, let's fucking fight. I'm getting my boots! Give me your boots. Ooh! Body slam! Body slam! Yeah, give me the boots. I'm after these boots. That dude just threw a goddamn javelin at me. Oh shit. Right, these boots are mine. <laughs> these guys are no joke. Eat one of these. Give me some more blood. Sam Porter Bridges is no, you know, he's no big boss in terms of CQC, that's for sure. But the body slam, the body slam is effective. The body slam is very effective. Hopefully I'm going the right way. Alright, I am going the right way. I'll eventually get there. Lost our, lost our trail. It's good. That's fun. So now I'm assuming, because I just picked up the boots, um, does that mean I can just change them immediately? Mule boots. There you go. Change footwear. Their old-fashioned design isn't particularly hard-wearing, and they tend to break fairly easily. What I might do though is I'm 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 gonna just hold on to I'm gonna just hold on to the boots that I currently have on. Because they haven't they haven't broken, so if I'm gonna change to boots that can break, I don't think there's any point right now, you know. So we'll keep my infinite boots on until we get to a point where not gonna let us anymore. I think we're getting close to, to BTs. Yeah. There we go. No, BTs in the time fall as well. Do I have that grenade thing though? I, I might I might not have taken it. I don't think I took it with me um, when I was preparing my cargo. So I think the grenade thing from the shower is still back home. Oh no! We got this BB. We got this BB. We got this BB. I accidentally ran into a group. It's okay. We got this BB. Ooh. This is the gr that's the grenade thing. Oh god. Hang on. It's used. Capsule made of Sam's condensed body fluids collected from the shower. Exploding on impact. It's theorized to affect BTs, though this is untested. It's used, though, so... We can't, we can't even throw it. Holy shit. This is stressful. Alright. 
Because I don't have any right now. I'm not going to be able to do anything about it. Sorry, BB. We're out of there, though. I didn't do a good job at that. Look at all the handprints on my back, dude. On my fucking cargo. Holy crap. We have a we have a lot to learn about this game and its encounters. I got very carried away with the encounters with the mules that I was like, yeah, we can just run through this area with the BTs and almost get dragged down and killed doing so. Oh damn. Beginning scan. Scanning bridges on the Alright, let me actually make sure I can pick up the... Footwork condition poor. Replacement is advanced. I like how the game tells us that it's like, your condition is poor and advising rest and like stuff like that. Which is really cool. A nice audio reminder. Let's take on some orders. So, recovery of the chiral printer interface. Oh, that's actually in a different area. So we're not getting it from that mules area. And then collection of chiral crystals. Heads up, Sam. Distro Center staff's got a favor to ask. Probably best I start from the beginning. This one's on us. We ordered a part a while back, but it never arrived. The printer needs it to communicate with the chiral network. Mules must have snatched it, caught the porter en route or something. If I'm right, they'll have taken it to their drop site, which is smack dab in the middle of their territory. Don't suppose you'd be up for stealing us our property back? Can't think of anyone more qualified than you. Okay. Take that, and then I want to take the chiral crystals as well. Sam, the area around that distro center has produced a significant quantity of chiral crystals. Matter of fact, that's where the chirelium used in your Cupid's internal circuitry came from. They have a range of applications, including equipment fabrication. Bottom line? They're a valuable resource, and one you'll want to make the most of. I'll let Hartman explain in more detail, but... Cairo crystals don't exactly grow on trees. If you see any deposits, you should go out of your way to gather them. Especially since folks with dooms are the only ones that can. Provided they have the necessary equipment, that is. I'll see that it's added to your supplies for this order. Sam, it's Hartman. Following the discovery of the beach, we not only began to observe heretofore unseen phenomena, but a new type of matter, Chirelium. I say new, but it has doubtlessly existed since the dawn of the universe. We believe it was always there, like dark matter and certain particles, ever present, yet overlooked because we lacked the capacity to see it. Chirelium appears to be unbound by the constraints of physics as we understand them. It can stop time or move contrary to it. On occasion, it even defies gravity. In practical terms, it can stop or even reverse time and causes objects to float. A special cylindrical case is required to collect and store it. Suffice it to say, the procurement of samples is vital to our ongoing research. We get that as well. Wonderful. So we can now actually properly pick up those Mama's crystals. Watchtower schematic to your PCC. If you don't have it on you, consider fabricating one. Never know when you'll need to recon an area. Mm, so we can now make our own. We can now make our own watchtowers as well. Okay. Mama's added a watch. Okay, I pressed it the wrong way. Never know. Um, so put it on there. Why is it making me... It's going to have three. I don't need three. Um, so PCC, mule boots, we've got some resins that I'll donate. These bridges boots are fucked, so let me get rid of those. thing you're holding is a crystal collector. Now, as the name suggests, it provides secure storage for any crystals you gather. Uh, 
Uh, uh, uh, allow me to describe your quarry. Chiral crystals appear gold to the naked eye and have frequently found in formations resembling human handprints. Mm -hmm. Surrounding rocks and debris tend to float a few feet above the ground. And they are most commonly found in areas with high precipitation. Got all that? Mm -hmm. Rain, floating rocks, golden handprints. That's your trifecta. Look for these three things and you'll find the crystals. If you've been especially observant, then perhaps you already know where to look. Yeah, I've seen them and we haven't been able to interact with them until now, so there you go. We've got the crystal collector. Ah, talk about hitting the wall hard. Catch my breath, I'm tired. I need a rest. I might do a rest then while we're here. I've done a lot of running around and not doing much. <laughs> um, okay, I need to store the PCCs in my private locker then, I guess. It's not that heavy, but I am going to store them in my private locker. Um, Looks like you've got an empty container there, huh? Feel free to submit junk like that to Bridget's. You might not have a use for it, but we do. Ah, so now that I've actually picked that up, that's a good that's a good thing to, to offload, so I can... Um, let me place this in a private locker, and this as well. Oh, hang on, there's the X grenade that I need. Give me that. get rid of it though she's like oh give it to us she's like I'm gonna be able to put it in my private locker I can't like donate it or anything I thought I'd be able to donate it like the resins that I'm carrying but it won't let me it won't let me do that here like make delivery recycle the resins that I have so I'm gonna just get rid of those because I don't need them. If you own a history, mule, most recent owner, strange. Maybe you can only do mule related stuff at a mule location? I don't know. Figure that out later I guess. I've got stuff to check out my private room and I do need to rest so we'll go back down. Before I head out again with these two new orders, then we'll collect crystals and get that printer part. received as well by taking a break so that's always good and then it's cool that you can check out when there's something that you need to check out in here it will show that little exclamation mark so we'll examine the equipment rack change color scheme ah so loons while sunglasses I have now unlocked rose pink wonderful what it wanted me to come and check out. We've got hot pink. Hot pink sunnies. Wonderful. Alright, let's read this. Let's read this email that we got.
This is such an interesting game to like record and do <laughs> and do a let's play of. Let me tell you guys, it's very it's very new to me. But we'll make it work. Nick Easton. A weird glowing object in Capital Knot City. Hey Sam, you heard the latest rumors out of Capital Knot City? People have been seeing some kind of weird glowing thing up on the rooftops near the isolation ward. Seems it's a car. The part of a human that doesn't turn into a BT. That's what people are saying anyway. Apparently they were a common sight back in the old days. Back before the stranding, I mean. Story goes that they were lost souls, wandering around. One of my pals tried to go take a closer look, see what's what, but he couldn't find anything. I'm sure you could do better if you put your mind to it though, right? So if we go back to Capital Not City, again, <laughs> which is a huge journey, um, you can see some kind of weird glowing thing up on rooftops near the isolation ward. Maybe next time we head back to Capital Not City, I'll have to take a look at that, and we'll see. While we're here, we'll read the interview that we got um, at the West Distribution Center from Die Hard Man. Before the stranding, the whole world was connected. There were networks, social networks we called them, that people used to communicate all the time. They shared all sorts of stuff through them. A random thought, a pretty picture, a home movie, you name it. And if you liked something that someone else had uploaded, you let them know by giving them, well, a like. It sounds weird, I know, but that's the truth. Eventually, someone ran tests on the users of those networks and discovered that receiving a like triggered a rush of oxytocin. The theory was that it stemmed from a sense of being acknowledged. Even though you couldn't see the person you were interacting with, it still felt like they were accepting you, praising you, and who wouldn't like that? But that same process is at the heart of the mule phenomenon. It's believed that an over-dependence on the oxytocin rush provided by these kinds of interaction is a factor in Porter's Gone, Road, uh, Gone Rogue. With this in mind, it wouldn't be wrong to characterize mules as oxytoxin addicts. In essence, they're social animals at the mercy of validation. I feel like um, this really takes Kojima's social commentary from Metal Gear Solid 2 in 2001 and really just updates it to like our future of like what it could be like after an apocalyptic event and um us as a society our need for validation through through social media because could like how kojima put that all together with how the internet's gonna go and how information is uh is shared on like through the internet and through uh networks and all of that kind of stuff like we we get our minds blown when we look at metal gear solid 2's story nowadays because that was 2001 now we're here again you know when this game came out in 2019 um and now with the director's cut in 2021 talking about you know social validation and how uh, social media works and how mules are oxytoxin addicts because they're social animals at the mercy of validation. Very, very interesting commentary. So that's really cool. Uh, so we've taken a read of that. Let's, uh, let's get on out of here because we've now rested in the private room. I've got all my stamina back. And we'll go pursue those orders. Good morning, buddy. Take a look. This is what the world looked like hundreds of millions of years ago. It was just one big continent. And do you know what this is? The moon. I'll show you the real thing soon. I promise. interesting how uh, you actually need to rest in order to get these sort of cutscenes and glimpses into BB's memories as well. So, resting serves multiple purposes. Footwear condition poor. 
Replacement is advised. Good morning, Sam. I like all those signs, and they actually pop up with little notifications on the, uh... on the left. Because, like, the signs apparently affect your character. Like, you get, like, stamina restored and, like, stuff like that. And, like, you pray for dry weather. It's very interesting how the signs work. The the connection, the, the theme of connection in this game is, is so interesting. And how, you know... Um... I don't know. Mads Mikkelsen's character, like, fucking teaching BB about the world used to be one big continent. <laughs> It was all connected. This is fascinating. Alright, we're going to do the chiral crystals first, because that's close. And then we can go get the chiral printer interface. So let's go check this out. Weapons Head back this way. Lifted. At least I don't have to go to that mule area. Sam, chiral crystals are pretty small. It can be difficult to spot with the naked eye. I'd advise you to use your ultra deck to point you in the right direction. If you want to survey a wider area, though, you might consider building a watchtower and relying on its sensors. Ooh. Okay, there we go. Um, I'm gonna build a watchtower. I, pr I prayed for dry weather and here it is raining already. I'm gonna put a watchtower here. Weapons restrictions lifted. Right, PCC. You select the structure. Watchtower. Ah, oh, you can upgrade it to level 2 using the following materials. A tower equipped with sensor cameras able to detect cargo, cryptobiotes, and structures. It can be used for long-range surveillance and recon. Okay. I'll put it right here. Beginning scan. Scanning bridges ID. Verifying ID. Clear. Weapons detected. All weapons will be locked until departure. All the future. The future of 3D printing. Construction complete. Weapons inspection lifted. Now we can see all of that. Love it. Okay, I've got a lot to get to, so I can get a lot of this this stuff if I want. And then uh, I've already got the cryptobiotes that I need. Awesome. There we go. Looks like I've got some work to do. Footwear condition poor. Replacement is advised. So let's deal with these chiral crystals, and then I'll probably end up getting the last car lost cargo a little bit later. Now I think we do it this way. Yeah, there we go. Chiral crystals. Let's just do all of it, I guess. Got some chiral crystals for us? These crystals only form in places with elevated chirillium levels. Which makes me wonder if expanding the network had something to do with it. Not a bad haul. Plenty enough for research. We'll take good care of them. I find it super interesting that they're in the shape of like a handprint. Provided data for the following. Container repair spray. Interview data required for chiral symmetry and chiralium. Uh, chiral crystals can now be used at all UCA aff affiliated facilities. The amount of materials that can be used at the distri uh, distribution center west of Capital Not City has increased. Claim materials. Excess chiral crystals can be deposited at any facility. They'll be added to the stores held on site. These local stores include materials that you can draw upon to fabricate equipment as needed. Okay. Distribution center west of Capital Not City has provided the following new hologram data. Bridges Guard Macho. Cool. Oh, before I forget. This is for you.
That's container repair spray for patching up cargo containers. Good for dealing with timefall degradation and all that. Useful stuff if you and your cargo have been through the ringer. We've added it to your supplies list, so it's readily available if and when you need it. I needed this when I was doing my dumb journey before. That's great. Give me one of those. Cool. There is a correlation between elevated corellium levels and increased crystal formation. This may well be the result of the network's expansion. You needn't worry though, local chiral density is still within an acceptable range. If you find any more, be sure to collect it. You'll be well rewarded. If you come into more chiral crystals, you can submit them at one of our facilities. And you can deposit other resources too, along with any items you don't need. Everything has its value. What we don't use as is, can be broken down into components for R&D and other applications. Well, they're just switching through all of the different people. Everyone's got so much to talk about, which is great. Wonderful. All right, let's run back through again and leave. Still got work to do, Sam. Let's not keep people waiting. Kept you waiting, huh? All right, we're going this way now, so not too far. Place a marker there. Off we go. So I haven't been off. I haven't been off this way before. Head up in that way. Call it a rule or a habit, but most mules almost always bring stolen shipments home with them. Find the post box, steal back the cargo. Simple as that. But find be a careful. post box, steal back. These guys cargo. are armed. If this goes sideways, be ready to fight. Ah, subduing mules. Well, I actually did that. I need to remember to hold square, not just press it. Claim some cargo in a ladder if I want it. Give me that. Because I used my ladder. Started playing. It started playing the music again, and then it just slowly faded out. <laughs> like, okay. Where did the music go? Guess we should go up this way. Got a lot of ladders and ropes and stuff to help us climb, if we want. Almost here, anyway. I'm glad that these orders weren't too far away. So not huge journeys. The only huge journeys have been the ones that I've been undertaking myself. <laughs> Self-inflicted pain. Painful deliveries. <sighs> Give me this rope. That's right. Look how useful this rope was. <laughs> to take me to here. Yes. Thank you so much, rope. I definitely wouldn't have been able to get there myself. Uh. Mule drop sites are rarely deserted, so remaining undetected is key. Keep a low profile and move slowly to minimize noise. Do some stealth action. Can I get him from behind with a sneak attack? In the back of the head! Yeah! 
Take that. Give him a haymaker right in the side of the head. Ah, yes, the old tall grass camouflage trick. Ooh, there we go. I might get rid of my custom marker now so it doesn't distract me. So we've got some mule boots here as well. Love it. This is cool. I was wondering if this is gonna. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. Ah. I have mastered the power of the shovel. <laughs> There's no stealth kill. There's no stealth kill! There's no stealth kill! How does he not know where I am? He Yeah! <laughs> what the fuck? Trust your instincts. This is so funny. Right, let's unlock this post box. Nice! I'm gonna get some stuff and some boots. And sure, let me get some medals. Let me get the chiropractor interface. How much? What's our weight limit? Well, we're pretty heavy. I might have to leave this stuff. Oh shit! He's awake. That's right, bitch. Don't mess with me. I may be a delivery man, but I got fucking punches. I can throw hands. Been busy? Seems all the mules in your vicinity have been incapacitated. That's right. Cause I'm a badass. With a heavy load. I'm ready to offload it onto some unlucky mules. Alright, let's see. I don't think I've got, I do have a ladder on me, so I might be able to. They're not very. They're not very long, though. Okay, here we go. Can I do a ladder here? Okay. Do a ladder. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. That's right. My ladder game has improved. Yeah. Much better than placing the one kind of in the water poorly. Sandalweed leaves can serve as temporary footwear in an emergency. What the fuck? Once you've acquired some, hold. <laughs> Dude, what? Sandalweed. You can have emergency shoes. Treasured by porters as an emergency replacement for boots. Sandalweed is not very durable, but can save you in a pinch. When walking in these, footsteps are almost inaudible to others and can be helpful in sneaky situations. That's great. i got three pairs of mule boots right now. Alright, I think we I've got enough boots that I can actually change over. So, no more... No more 99% damaged boots. We just now have now have boots that are uh, easily destroyed in comparison. The mule boots are weaker. Like the stamina bar is uh, like half the size, almost. I'm glad that the objective marker wasn't too far away. You know, so I don't have to worry too much. And if I go here, uh, what I can do. Is do a climbing anchor. Shove that shit here. Hey. Nice. And just make out. Just go down. I feel like this is a decent. This is a decent route, All right? Oh, I'm stuck on a piece of rock though. Go down, Sam. This one's not bad. Mules. 
damn addicts chasing a cargo high. Shame we gotta deal with their bullshit at all. Back in the day, AI did everything. Deliveries were handled by unmanned vehicles and drones. And all we had to do was sit back and let them work. It was revolutionary. Damn near singularity. No reason for it not to take off. But it didn't. People didn't like it when we took the human element out of the service industry. So, after some consideration, we put it back in. Made jobs no one really needed and gave them the folks who couldn't live without them. And from there, it snowballed. Now we got cults of cargo chasing crazies who get off on hijacking shipments. Jackal's always on the lookout for the next porter. Make sure you're not him. How crazy is the concept of, like, um... Just, like, deliveries being such an integral part of the world. Which it is. Like, it is now. Deliveries are one of the most important, like, factors of, like, modern society. Almost there. And it becoming one of, like, the... In the, in this game, especially one of the like main focal points, it's such an such an interesting take on the commentary about like what uh, humanity needs to survive and to persevere. Is like it's reliant on you know on porters to to do stuff. But then also there are people who get like addicted to it and then they turn into mules. There's a lot to, lot to think about. Like, I can't wait until I have m like more of an understanding of like the world and the story as we as we progress, and then once I'm actually done with the game, analyze the absolute shit out of it. <laughs> Just be like, what the hell is going on? Like, there's a, there's a lot there's a lot of stuff that will probably go over my head in this game, but I'm trying to make sure I can capture as much of it as I can as we go through. That's why reading the interviews, which we're going to do after this, because we unlocked a couple more, is very useful. I think reading those interviews, reading those emails actually like putting the world together through all of the different pieces of dialogue is is a is a very very useful uh useful thing to do to understand a world like this but let's deliver our stuff shall we deliver the lost cargo and store some metals sure i'll do that I'm going to get closer and closer to a point where I just start entrusting cargo instead of making really, really long Bad journeys. <laughs> trying to put the rest of us to shame. <laughs> Fine by me. Because those really, really long journeys are rough. <laughs> See you around. Good work. Okay, let's now deliver the requested cargo. Less with the man with the same code name as the boss. Nice. Sam, how are your shoes holding up? Boots. Not too well, I imagine. Conditions being what they are out. <gasps> I say skip the dialogue. Not too well, I imagine. Conditions being what they are out there. It ruins your day like shoes falling apart while you're on the job. Carry on like that, and it's only a matter of time before you injure yourself. I've arranged for boots to be added to your supplies. Bridges standard issue, so they ought to fit you fine. You should always carry an extra pair. But if you forget or run into trouble, you can fabricate another via a terminal at one of our many facilities. Nice, it's boots time. I'm also grateful that if you accidentally skip a line of dialogue like I just did, it will resume from the next one. It doesn't just like cancel out the whole thing. Metal Gear Solid used to do that, and that was that was a little bit of a little bit of a pain. 
Um, more interview data. Guys, you ready for more reading about Death Stranding? Yes, you are. You're going to learn about Death Stranding with me, whether you like it or not. We are getting this information. Uh, a new structure. We can actually make a bridge. Hell yes. We can make a bridge. This game just gets better and better as we go along, and I think that's absolutely fantastic. I'm having such a, like, a fun time, even though I'm making some mistakes early on. So you're out. Wearing out all my stuff. Congratulations, Sam. I understand you now have access to a Chiron printer. An extraordinarily useful device that can only function because of the manner in which our network utilizes the beach, enabling us to transfer massive volumes of data instantaneously. Since under normal circumstances, such transfers would take hours, if not days, some have speculated that the chiral network might, in essence, be a time machine. That it is transmitting data into the past. Suffice it to say, we have yet to fully grasp the fundamental nature of the network and the beach which we have come to rely upon. One might liken our relationship with it to that of primitive man's with fire. Is it useful? Quite. Is it dangerous? Undeniably so. Nevertheless, we have decided that the reward outweighs the risk. Furthermore, as the BTs are linked to the beach, it stands to reason that further study and experimentation could be of considerable benefit. The same could be said regarding you, of course. <laughs> Rest assured, I will keep you apprised of what I learn. You have my word. Good work. Is he called Heart Man because he's literally got a device that's like linked to his heart on his chest and it has a little drawing of a heart on it. It's very interesting. Um, so bizarre. Alright, there's another mule set up. We have some information to go through. So it's data time. Like I said, we've got stuff to read. More stuff about the world. Let's have a look. So we've got three things from Heart Man and some stuff from Mama as well, which we still haven't met in person. We haven't had a like proper thing yet. So I'm very curious to see when that's going to happen. Okay, so we've got more stuff uh, to do with Egyptian um, perception. So this is really cool because Heartman really gets into the, the Egyptian mythology side of things, which is uh, which is so interesting. So necrosis and the ancient Egyptian view of life and death. The Egyptians believed that we humans were composed of two elements, the Ha and the Ka, the body and the soul. Various texts expound upon their nature in detail, but perhaps it is simplest to conceive of them as follows. The soul is that which joins with the child in the womb and gives life to the body. It is also that which departs the body upon death. Ergo, the body is simply a vessel. Should the soul return to it, it will live again. Which is, uh, I guess, the concept of this strand thing in general is when Sam dies, he follows the strand to guide his soul back to his body. This is precisely what is observed in near-death experiences, a soul separated, uh, albeit briefly, from its body. The Egyptians believed a soul, uh, sorry, the Egyptians believed death not to be an instantaneous change of state, but a process, a process by which the soul moves from one realm to another. But this process itself has changed thanks to the Death Stranding. In the normal order of things, when death occurs, the soul vacates the body and passes it into the seam. From there, it transitions to the beach, and only then onto the world of the dead. But after the stranding, a soul that has already made its journey to the beach may attempt to return to its body in this world. It was hard to believe at first, but the process of necrosis provided proof of this phenomenon that was difficult to deny. This is why it is imperative that we burn the bodies of the dead. The body must be destroyed to sever the link with the soul. Only then will, be, uh, will the soul be uh, free to journey to the world beyond. So uh, we've seen Sam on the beach as well, and then he has been able to guide himself back to his body. Chiral Symmetry the word chiral comes from the Greek kia. Kia? Sorry about pronunciation, by the way. Uh, pronunciation, meaning hand. K 
Compare your left with your right. They seem similar in both size and shape, yes? Now face your palms away from you and place one hand over the other. Their shapes do not overlap exactly, but place your palms together and voila, a match. It is as if one hand is the mirror image of the other. But again, if you were to actually compare the mirror image of your hand to itself, we would see that the two are not identical. This is the essence of chirality, the state in which the mirror image of a shape does not match the original. It has been theorized that BTs are mirror images of ourselves, where were we to exist in the same point in time and space, our shapes, as it were, would not overlap neatly onto one another, save in reflection. And when our particles meet their opposites, a void out occurs. The new form of communication we have devised utilizes beaches, which are akin to mirrors reflecting this world and the other, hence the term chiral network. And chiralium? You would like to know more about Chirelium? Well, wouldn't we all? I am happy to present the latest theories, but you must be aware that this is all that they are. Theories. Chirelium, like dark matter, was born along with our universe and has existed ever since, just not in a dimension we were able to perceive, until now. It is the beach that gives us access to that dimension, and with it, knowledge of Chirelium's existence. Not just knowledge of it, of course. We have since observed it coalescing into crystalline form, and recorded measurable physical and mental effects on individuals exposed to it. It has reshaped our understanding of reality, and proven instrumental in the formulation of the multiverse theory of beaches. Chiral matter is not affected by the passage of time. As far as these particles are concerned, none has elapsed since the Big Bang. Little wonder they escaped our notice for so long until man and BT first came together in void out and left nothing but Chiralium in their wake. Many of these claims are yet to be verified, but I believe that this is a fair summary of the scientific community's current consensus on the matter. No pun intended. <laughs> I shall soon be heading west with the first expedition, and I look forward to learning more about Chirelium and its connections to the beach along the way. Interesting. I've got Mama with the Chiral Network number one, three years ago before the first expedition's departure. So the core infrastructure is complete. The basic Cupid-ready Chiral Network setup is good to go. Now all we have to do is connect Central Knot City to Capital and prove that it actually works. Sadly, I won't be here to see it. I've been assigned to the expedition team's second group, so I'll be heading west with the others. But the people in charge here are the best of the best. They'll have the network operational inside of three years just as planned, I'm sure of it. And while they're seeing to that, we'll be visiting towns and whatnot across the country and putting the facilities in place for when things are finally up and running. Amelie and the others in the lead group will be forging the connections and laying the groundwork to make sure everything goes to plan. Afterwards, we'll just need to link it all up with operational cupids, and that should be that. <laughs> it's kind of like the Apollo missions back in the day. They used a three-stage rocket to get to the moon, right? Well, we're using a three-stage process to do something almost as revolutionary. Interesting. Oh, hang on. I think I still have... Sorry, Bridges staff. Two years ago, distribution center west of Capital Knot City. It's been about a year now since we came here with the rear guard. The first folks, though, did us the favor of setting up the chiral relay and patching things up before we arrived, so we're doing all right. Not so sure about everyone else, though. Folks back home sound kind of freaked out. We don't know what's going on in Central or Capital, let alone how Armelie and the others who kept heading west are doing, but something doesn't feel right. What's more, a lot of the guys have developed some kind of agoraphobia, like the thought alone of going outside scares the shit out of them. See, the distro centers and way stations around these parts here aren't like the ones back east. They're much more isolated, out in the middle of nowhere, but can't help but feel cut off from the world. And there's not a lot of staff on hand, uh, on hand? Oh my god. Sometimes I read two words at once and then use the pronunciation of one word and put it in the other. Like I was like, oh my, what? There's not a lot of staff on hand, neither. Which means you often have to do the work of two guys, which can make it that much lonelier too. And then you factor in the terrorism rumors. Also, is it just me, or does it feel like there's more mules out uh, there these days? Don't get me wrong, I know they're not out to get us, all they want is our cargo, right? Well, that doesn't change the fact that they're not making our work any easier. Especially since a lot of these guys used to be first-rate porters, and could run, thing, run rings around us if they hadn't, you know. Still, for now, the network systems are up and running, and we're just holding out for the day when the second expedition comes through with a working Cupid. Till then, we'll keep things chugging along. That much we can do. For bridges and country, am I right? There we go. Sorry for any mistakes that I make when I'm reading out loud, by the way. 
I, I've gotten a lot better at reading out loud since doing, like, YouTube stuff. Because uh, I used to struggle. You, like, you can read stuff internally perfectly, but when you have to actually say the stuff, it's always it's always a bit interesting. <laughs> but I like to think I do I do all right. But we've got some new jobs to... We've got some new orders to get, so let's have a look. Actually, can I recycle... There we go, I can goddamn recycle this stuff now. There we go. I can't recycle... Okay, let's do that. Recycle some metals. Thank you for your continued support. Such a, that's such an interesting thing that pops up. There we go. I didn't recycle those metals. Interesting. I forgot that. Let's just do that again. Again! Thank you! What happened? Okay. <laughs> my game! My game! Alright, fabricate equipment. We've added a bridge schematic to your PCC. The first step is laying the foundation. After which, you'll have to supply additional materials to finish the job. Plenty of rivers and canyons could do with a good bridge, you know. Take a stroll across one you built yourself, and I guarantee you'll be glad you made the effort. Give it a try. The foundation of a bridge. Once the foundation is in place, add materials to level up the structure and complete the construction. When constructing a bridge, use L2 triangle to select its length, 50 or 80 meters. And you need 800 metals for that. That's super bizarre. Container of space, prey, and bridges boots. I want some boots. Oh, I've already got two in my private locker, but I think that they're the bad ones though, right? And then tools, and then equipment. Wonderful. Um, let me have a look at my locker. Because these are ones that are damaged. Can I just get rid of stuff? How do I get rid of stuff? If I just want to ditch it. Like, there's no option to just delete. I can just offload it. If I don't want it anymore. This, I don't know how to get rid of. There we go. Now I can recycle it. Wonderful. I just needed to do that mission first. Great. Perfect. Okay, so can I actually recycle those boots that I just offloaded? Thank you for your contribution. Sorry guys, I'm learning. I am learning. Uh, recycle. I can. Cool. I can get rid of my boots that are all fucked. There we go. Get out of here. Get recycled, boys. You're done. We have a decent amount of metals, so we should be able to... Uh, we've got a lot of metal, so we should be able to make a bridge. Alright, but now I can make some brand new boots. I'm gonna get two. I'm not gonna do a bridge yet, though. Unless it's an order that I have to do. <laughs> Alright, attach that to a boot clip. And put on footwear. Yeah. You know. Okay. Uh, these mule boots, I'm going to store them in my private locker. And same with those. So we'll keep, we'll keep mule boots, like, in my locker, just in case, you know. And Bridges boots are much stronger, so we'll keep those. Clay materials. Clay materials from the facility. Ah, oh, so they've got usable materials. That makes sense. I guess I'll do that when I need them. Let's have a look at our orders. So power supply unit delivery to the wind farm. Construction of a bridge. So we do have to do it. And collection. Cargo discovered in the ruined factory. Maser gun recommended. We do not have a gun. 
Sir, we do not have a gun. Why would you give me an order that requires a gun? Let's listen to the briefing of Power Supply Unit Delivery Wind Farm. Now, you've done a fine job expanding the Cairo network. But to make the most of it, we'll need to generate more power. We'll have to make a few hops before we can link up the closest city, too. Once this wind farm is part of the Cairo network, we'll be able to route the energy it generates through the beach. Unlike traditional transmission methods, nothing is lost. We can provide power to distant regions and utilize facilities there as electrical substations. You're to deliver a key component. Should be finished printing. Take it to the wind farm and get us in business. Okay. I will take it to Jake Wind. <laughs> to Jake Wind, the wind farm. Uh, we'll obviously construct a bridge. So we'll build a bridge at the designated construction site. Uh, let's listen to that briefing. Hey, Sam. Mind doing me a favor? There's a bridge that needs building. Over a river, just outside that distro center. It's too deep to ford, and we'd like a long-term solution. The foundation's already been laid, and everything required to finish the job should be in storage. All you need to do is carry the remaining materials to the construction area and use them to complete the bridge. If it turns out there isn't enough there for our needs after all, you'll have to come up with the rest on your own. I know you've got a lot on your plate right now, but remember, this bridge will make your life easier too. I should have all the materials. And then let's listen to this to see what it mentions about the gun. Do you see the ridge to the east of the distro center? Well, up top is an old decommissioned factory. Abandoned, we thought. Until we spotted mules making themselves at home among the ruins. We need to know what they're up to. But getting inside won't be easy. Fortunately, a few days ago, we observed them taking cargo out of the facility and prepping it for transport. If we can secure that cargo for analysis, we might gain some insight into their plans. And that's where you come in. The cargo is situated near the factory entrance. All you have to do is grab it and bring it back to the distro center. As always, stealth would be our preferred approach. But you'd best be ready to fight if they catch you. Make sure you're well prepared before you head out. Well, we'll accept the we'll accept it because the cargo is needed at the destination, so we'll accept it anyway. Hopefully, I'll get a gun at some point. Then I guess. There you go. All right, let's accept the orders. Um, we will need. Um, I've got a PCC already, so I think we'll be okay. Power supply unit, carry that on the back. Oh, these are the metals, so this is the equipment to do the, the bridge. Oh! We're issuing you a Mazer gun. This close range non lethal weapon incapacitates hostiles with a powerful electrical burst. Bear in mind that it requires battery power to function. You should visit the firing range to familiarize yourself with it. Use the terminal to head to the range whenever you like. Cool. All right, we get given the gun, a gun that fires a powerful electrical charge. This charge is produced as a result of the Mazer magnetically accelerated stroke of electric reverberation uh, effect generated by the interaction between chiral and magnetic, magnetic fields. Renders human targets unconscious and temporarily immobilizes vehicles. Hold R2 to continually administer the charge until the target is neutralized. The Mazer gun is effective over a wider area if discharged near water. That's so cool. So anti-personnel weapon. Uh, check that on my check that on my tool rack. Ladder. Attach that to my suit. Uh, attach it to my back here. Okay, um, so we've got a climbing anchor, power supply unit, metals for the bridge, uh, repair spray. A ladder, a grenade, I got a maser gun, got my boots, alright, I'll take a PCC with me, oh no, hang on, the foundation for the bridge has already been laid down, right, so I actually don't need the PCC, we're good, let's head out, got my stuff on, let's go, thank you for your contribution, 
equip my gun in here. That's a ladder. I equip my gun in here. Use of weapons is prohibited. How do I go to the firing range? Oh god. Yeah, he said it was like right, is it over here? Is this okay, this is my prior room. Where the hell is my firing range at? Is the firing range through the terminal? Hold on. Oh, yes, private room firing range. Give me a firing range, please. Let's have a look at this gun. It's gun time. This is the episode where we just learn everything. <laughs> Before we were confused by story, now we're confused by game mechanics. VR mission. It's literally a VR mission, dude. <laughs> the firing range. Here you can try out weapons arranged behind Sam and experiment with their various capabilities. Once you've picked up a weapon, hold uh, right on the D-pad, press uh, R to equip it. Access the terminal in front of Sam to take part in true life drills, restore weapons and targets to the original state, and leave the firing range. So I've got stuff behind me. The maser gun. Give me that. Okay. So it shoots out like a little charge. Okay, I see. It doesn't have much range. Hold R2 to unleash. Continued exposure to the charge run a human tiger's unconscious and vehicles temporarily unstable. It says hold it, but it won't let me shoot more than... Ah, there we go. Okay, so it's automatic. I can't extend the range. It doesn't have much range. <laughs> So if you just shoot it like this, it does one, but if you actually put it on a target, you can hold it down. Oh, it resets the whole thing, so I have to pick up the weapon again. Okay. Give me this gun. Okay, I see. What a, what a peculiar weapon. Just give me my, uh, just give me my, my nice little pistol. Give me my Trank pistol. I'm good. Cool. You can sneak up on a mule from behind and use a strand to bind them. Oh. So that's what I could... I, I can make use of the strands that way. That's really cool. Take part in weapon-based drills. Destroy all targets. Eliminate all mules. Ah, with the strand. Let me try this. Alright. Practice. Let's practice with the strand. Oh, this is cool. Bind all targets with strands and make your way to the goal area. Okay. Let's fucking go. Alright. So ready a strand and bind. This is cool. We're getting we're getting all metal gear now. The stealth. Sorry, you said that, that was non-lethal? We broke his neck. We broke his neck. What are you talking about non-lethal? Dude, this game is fun as hell. There's so many unique elements to the gameplay in this. No 
you don't know that I'm here. I'm invisible. You don't know that I'm here. Sir, you don't know that I'm here. Shit. You can parry. You can use strands to secure cargo to carry as a couple of strands. Ready, once the strands ready. You will be able to parry mule melee attacks. There's a prompt. Oh, God. What's the prompt? I'm waiting for it. So you can parry them, and then it leaves them wide open for a for a bind. Oh, this is fantastic. You want to dance with me, son? Let's go. So cool. Oh, bit of a camera glitch there. Come on, son. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. The, the window of opportunity is very, uh, very clear, so that's cool. Where's our next dude? Uh, 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 Come on, bud. Let's go. Let's dance. Let's dance! Oh, shit. I was not ready to dance, sir. I'm ready to dance now. I was too busy running around. That's awesome. Oh, there's a target that we have to run to, because of course there is. Yeah. Cool. Oh, I now know how to bind targets with a strand. That's cool. I like that a lot. Uh, no. I'm done. Let's do a drill with the actual Mazer gun. So, uh, this is good. I can actually learn how to... You get bonuses, which is cool. I'm going to learn how to actually do stuff. So we can apply it to real-world scenarios. Defeat all targets and make your way to the goal area. There we go. All right. So let's see how this works on people. So, I was meant to crouch. There we go. I fucked it up immediately. That's how that works. There you go. I obviously set them off on purpose. Ooh, they're scanning for me. Oh shit, he's just throwing his spear at me. How's that for perfect stealth, guys? How dare you, sir? Can't you see that I've got a little electric gun? So I think it's instant when I think it's instant when they're not aware of you. But then once they've seen you, it takes like time, like this. have done that better, but I got caught literally immediately. What a disappointment. Dun 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 Look, an A is not bad. Ah, familiar with drills. Get me out of here. We'll leave the firing range now. That's a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun. I like it. I like it a lot. This game has such an interesting blend of like exploration and um, but also there's some there's some combat sprinkled in to make it exciting, you know. Let's do this bridge 
ranked orders. To participate in the rankings, compare your performance to that of other players. Take on a ranked order or attempt to drill at the firing range when these events are available. Ooh. A new ranked event is available. Select ranked orders from the cufflinks to view it. Cool. Ranked orders. Uh, you can do them on the amazing gun. Okay. So you can actually do them on drills. That's cool. That's cool. Um, so this is the bridge, right? Uh, let's do this first. Okay, Sam. Make your way to the designated construction area for the bridge. The foundation should already be in place. With your help, we'll have the thing finished in no time. There should be a terminal nearby. Access it to submit additional materials. Weapons restrictions lifted. We're a bit heavy right now, so you have to give me a moment. So this is the foundation of the bridge, I see. What is this? I don't even know what it is. It has a lot of likes, though. So they can? C-A? Sam, it looks like you found the site. There should be a terminal nearby. Access it to submit additional materials. When you see the start icon, hold it down until the delivery terminal responds. Complete structure. There we go. So it needs metals. Wonderful. So that's the 800 metal in total. Good. Sam Porter Bridges. Constructing bridges. That's so cool. Bridge constructed. Bravo, Sam. That bridge should make life easier for a lot of people. You can be sure that every traveler and porter who passes that way will put it to good use. Keep an eye out for other spots that could do with another well placed bridge. So cool. Now you can just make bridge with 800 metals. I like that. Um, Alright, we need to go here to go to the ruined factory or we can go to the wind farm um well we've got the mazer so i can actually do this now which is cool i think i'm going to do this one so we'll head over that way i'm going to head back over the bridge now but now that i have i've got i've got 342 mils of urine so that's good you know we got Four grenades? Yeah. We got four grenades, so I can throw that at some BTs. I love it, we're getting we're getting more prepped and my cargo isn't too heavy. So I can actually sprint without needing to fall over every two seconds. And hopefully one day find a battery for that bike, I can actually cover more ground. So we've got materials they can find. Weapons to weapons restriction <laughs> Let's head to this factory and see what mules we're dealing with. See if I can actually do do perfect stealth <laughs> without getting caught immediately. I think some of the some of the places that you find and that you can walk through are very very interesting. Like we've, I've walked through like essentially like a car graveyard, right? I've walked through a car graveyard, which is like cars that are just like almost like just sunk into the ground and covered in moss and stuff. And now we're approaching this area. Look at this. Yeah, you know, a butterfly and a graveyard yeah. and all of these flowers. With their names as well. I mean, I'm not going to reach too far because a world like this would have a graveyard, but like. Be nice if somebody could fill in for me for a day. I just want you guys to think about Metal Gear Solid 3 yeah. specifically. Uh, obviously, we know the graveyard with all of the flowers and how Peace Walker specifically used, uh, and even in Metal Gear Solid 5 to an extent, used butterflies as symbolism. 
uh, for the for the boss. Hmm. I think that's very interesting. That a lot of a lot of that imagery, the graves, the butterflies, the flowers, all relates to the boss from Metal Gear Solid. It's interesting that all of these graves either have here lies my beloved son or here lies my beloved daughter. So the graves are all uh, all very um, very identical. Then we've got like a random bunker here as well. I don't know if we can interact with this. Nobody out here, but us damn fools. I guess not. Interesting choice on the top of the mountainside for uh, for a grave site. There you go. No. Almost at our almost at our destination, which is the factory. I love that if you check out this over here, which is the incinerator that we went to to burn uh, the body of Bridget, that it does have all of the. Uh, <laughs> Just all of the matter going up in the air because we know that it's like a BT site. Honestly, the just a bit further now. The the environments are so beautiful in this game. It's very fascinating. Hmm. Um, so we're almost we're basically on our custom marker. So we're in this area. So I think the I'm not sure if the factory is up here because I've climbed all the way to the top. But if it's not, we can always climb down. Oh, here we go. Infiltrating enemy bases. Use tall grass and various obstacles to avoid being spotted. Sam, you should be coming up on that cargo. And a boatload of mules, no doubt. Stay out of sight and try not to make too much noise if they're within earshot. We don't want this going sideways. And then I will equip the Mesa gun. Oh, I should have reloaded this. I did have to use it on my way to one of the distribution centers to deliver some cargo because we went through the mules territory here. Well, at least we've got the strand which we can use to incapacitate them and we can always punch them. But we've got the advantage of being up high. Alright, let me remove this marker. I'm. I think when we do our, like, pulse, though, doesn't that also alert them? Alright, there we go. We can see them. I like how mules also have gear for us to grab and use if we need to. Like, if we need to use a climbing anchor or a ladder, they have them. Where's the cargo that we need, though? Locating detected cargo. Once you've detected a piece of cargo by sending out a cargo scanner, you can check its location by looking at the map. We haven't pinged it yet. Oh. Do we need to collect? No, that's the post box. Okay. We still haven't found the cargo here yet. I might use my rope to go down the bottom. I think that's like a decent place to put it, don't you think? Or maybe here. And then I can go down this way. <clears throat> Maybe I should just do it from do it from here. This might be good. I didn't mean to fall all the way down, Jesus. I left all my stuff up there. God damn it. Well, that was not how this was supposed to go, and now my BB's stressed. Oh, that's such a shame. Like, sometimes you run a lot faster than you think you're going to run. Which is which is a little sad. Because I was supposed to do something fancy there. And put a rope down, and now look what I've done. Oh, my God. 
annoyed? Yes, I am. <laughs> like, fucking, that was gonna, that was going to go so well, and then I just accidentally sprinted right off the edge. So I'm gonna show you what I was intending to do before I alerted the whole factory to my presence. Look at all my stuff. All right, give it back, please. Let's just chuck everything off. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, what I was going to do before I slipped. Why wouldn't it let me? Okay. I was climbing anchor. I was going to put it. No. Wait, let me put it there. Can I put it here? Oh. Maybe I have to end up putting it here anyway. What? Obstacle detected. Oh, I can put it there. There we go. Oh, there we go. And I was going to go... I was originally going to do it over that side, but I can do it here now. Down here. Glad at least you don't take an immense amount of damage when you fall from a great height. But there you go. Oh, it, ooh, it's close. There you go. Problem is, I don't think I can grab that rope now, so that's just only a safe way down, and that is no longer a good way up. I would have to put a ladder there now to then meet my rope. So that didn't work as well as I wanted it to, but that's all part of the learning experience, I guess. Alright, I'm assuming we're heading down here. Looks like our delivery would be down this way. There it is. We found it. Get a little bridge. Stairway out of cars. This dude's just knocked out down here. There's nothing down here, I think, except for the post box. The locked door. I eat a crypt to buy it. Well, I mean, oh, I don't have any. Actually, never mind. I need to pick some up, I guess. Let's unlock the post box. Okay, so ruined factory data. There we go. These metals would be good, but we are going to leave it behind. Otherwise, we're going to be way too heavy. We'll come back here later. Good work, Sam. I knew you'd get what we need. Looks like the entrance is locked down. Not that we were planning to head inside just yet. No point in sticking around. Get that cargo back to the distro center. Okay. Now I can get out of here. Yeah, like look at the look at the overgrown cars. I love the detailing on it. It's great. <laughs> I guess I can go this way. There's the distribution center! God damn it. Sam. What's the best way to do this? Let's have a look. So that is quite a distance. Just take just take the slow path. I've already done enough damage to myself. Got no ladders or ropes from other people to help me here, so we're just gonna, just gonna go for it. We're just balancing. There we go, super speedy. <laughs> super speedy, there we go. Oh, just don't trip on a rock. Fuck's sake. Ooh, hang on. What's this? Luden's fan. What's this? Why did it drop my daughter? Just by hitting the wall. Okay. What is this? Hmm. Luden's fan. You can do some delivery here. Do you orders for delivery to this facility? Interesting. I don't know what this is yet, but 
guess, from Sapiens to Ludens. Well, I guess we will come back to this later at some point. There we go, we've got stuff to deliver. And we can go and do the power cell delivery. Decontaminating suit. Welcome, Sam Porter Bridges. Hello, I've got a delivery for you. Tripped and fell onto some, fell into a wall at some point, but like, pretty good guys. Active Support skeleton. skeleton. To your legs to enhance strength and facilitate movement. Yo. This particular model will allow you to carry heavier loads and help maintain your balance. Hell yes. When boosted, you'll be able to move somewhat faster, at the expense of power, of course. While this basic type does not excel in any particular category. It is resilient, and its battery consumption is comparatively low. Much better than relying on your legs alone, in short. See for yourself. I got Huey Emmerich legs. Bridges has provided the following sound data, Power, power Yellow, which we just listened to. Uh, new interview data, memo number one, a call to arms. Hell yes. Oh, before I forget. This is for you. Bridges. Support skeleton. An active skeleton that provides support for porters out in the field when equipped. The wearer's cargo carrying capacity will be greatly increased while the skeleton is equipped, and battery power is available. Press L3 for a speed boost, but be aware that boosting will drain battery at an accelerated rate. Keep an eye on your battery levels. The battery will gradually recharge in sunny or cloudy weather. Cargo can be attached to the hips while using a support skeleton. Oh yeah. Love that. Let's equip it. Let me chuck it on. Nice! I got cool legs. Wonderful. See you around. That's awesome. Now I can greatly do when I see a bunch of cargo. 185 kilograms now. When I see all that cargo I need to pick up, I can make riskier journeys. <laughs> So instead of, um, it's just replaced the, the boots, um, in my bottom left corner of the stamina. So I think, there you go, we can fabricate new ones and fabricate Mazer Gun. Does that mean I need to make a new one because my other one's out of charge? Or should we, we can recharge what I've got, right? It wants me to rest in the private room as well. Let me just have a look. Um, the Mazer Gun, 3 out of 30. I think I might need to... I don't know if you can recharge it. Maybe if I go into the firing range. But this just gives me a different gun, so I'm not sure. Because this just takes us into an entirely different area. I don't know if this is re this refreshes the one that we have or not, so let's leave the firing range. Oh no, my boots my boots stamina are still there, but it just shows my thing as well. Alright, it doesn't recharge this. I think we might have to make new ones. So I can re can I recycle I can recycle the gun now. Ammo three out of thirty. So I think I can recycle the gun, and then make new ones. So 
So, fabricate a laser gun. Ammo. Oh, this one has more ammo. This one has 60 ammo. There you go. So, I'm going to make one of those. Yes. And hang on to my tool rack. Hell yeah. So, I got a better laser gun than I had before. And now I go to the private room because there's something to do in there. So let's enter our private room. Head on down. It keeps giving me the option to skip them, but I'm not sure if these are like. I think that they're just like going to be the same cutscenes. I don't think anything story related or unique is going to happen in these moments but i'm just not going to skip them just in case anyway good morning sam at least until i'm confident won't skip anything but we've got new we've got more mail uh, there was another one that i didn't read yet that we need to read so let's go over our data now so in our mail we have two nick easton and benjamin hancock we didn't read this one how's bb doing sam i hope you've managed to avoid uh, autotoxemia altogether. By the way, I've been wondering, how are your porter grades these days? Getting better and better, I imagine. Or maybe you don't really care about that stuff. Well, in case you do, I thought I might give you a quick primer since I know it can be confusing. Bridges has developed a unique system to evaluate porter performance, and it focuses on five categories. Cargo condition, delivery volume, speed, bridge link, and miscellaneous. Obviously, the aim of the game is to get high grades in all five categories. If you ask me though, you should prioritize cargo condition. I mean, what's the point of lugging something halfway across the continent if it's smashed to bits in the process? Sure, some people aren't all that bothered. Some will even let you get away with up to 50% damage or so, but come on. Imagine if you ordered a dozen thingamajigs and half of them were delivered broken. No, it's definitely better to put condition first. Treat your cargo with care and respect and you'll be rewarded with way more likes. Trust me. That was my motto back when I was a porter. It wasn't always easy, as you can imagine. Sometimes things got dicey, but I learned to hang in there and deliver my cargo in one piece. You do well to bear that in mind, Sam. After all, you've got the potential to be a way better porter than I ever was. Alright, Nick Easton. You're the great deliverer, alright. Hey Sam, you're quite something, aren't you? Delivering cargo out there, all by yourself, stitching America back together. I mean, I'm not surprised you're up to it. Uh, you're a repatriate, after all, and a member of Bridges, too. Still. You've gone above and beyond. There's just something about you, I guess. Maybe it's something to do with the connection between you and the President and Amelie. Well, I guess I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, it's going to save the world. I just know it. There you go. Uh, we do have uh, interviews to check out, so let's have a look. Where are we? Memo number one, the call to arms from Unknown. We're not done yet. Hardly even started and far from finished. They think they got away with it, covered up their tracks and took us out for good measure. No one knows and no one ever will. That's what they believe. But we're still here. Still remember. And we still have the stomach for it, don't we? I know I do. And I think you do too. So stand with me and fight. We'll destroy that fake future Bridges is building for us and reclaim what's rightfully ours. Interesting. There you go. And then our music player, we got another song. Pale Yellow by Woodkid. Sweet. Wonderful. Now, I'm wondering if that mail is the only new thing that we've got here. Let me have a look if there's anything else. That's it. Cool. I will take that opportunity, guys, to bring this episode of Death Stranding to a close. So, thank you so much for watching this one. Uh, I hope that the, the editing and how I'm piecing together relevant information in this episode is uh, is working out for you guys. I hope you're enjoying the Let's Play. Death Stranding is definitely a very unique and different type of game to capture in a Let's Play format because uh, I am taking opportunities to um, trim out and cut out those uh, long walking segments to just, you know, take my time and put on my own music and, and chill out and, and, stuff like, and stuff like that. And... Um, then include the relevant story pieces and the orders and stuff like that. I think that's the best way to do it to avoid having episodes with just like a lot of drawn out um, nothingness. But let me know how you feel about that. I'm uh, definitely trying my best to capture all of the good stuff in Death Stranding. I'm having a really fun time. I think this game and the world is absolutely fascinating. The gameplay is very unique. It's very cool to like use the systems of like climbing around the place with like ladders and ropes. And when I'm not tripping and falling down cliffs uh, to almost my death, uh, it's it's pretty fun. <laughs> it's pretty fun. So guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of Death Stranding, and I'll see you next time.